Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. Today we are looking at a couple of sheets for the Mora Garberg. Now this is, I believe, Mora's only full tang knife. And while I'm on that subject, guys that are real knife freaks and really know their stuff, tell me if you think this actually qualifies as full tang. I, I always understood it to be, you know, that this would be something like a rat tail. Obviously it's not a rat tail, but... Um, I always understood full tang to mean that it was actually exposed on the top and bottom of the handle as well. So for whatever it's worth, uh, I know that it's advertised as a full tang knife and it certainly has a tang that runs through. So maybe it's a through tang, but uh, anyway, I do really like the Garberg. It's, uh, it's got a very aggressive spine, so it's very easy to strike a rod on that. And it's also got the Scandi grind as do, I believe all of Mora's knives, or, or at least most of them. And I really like a Scandi grind. So for me, this is a pretty good knife. And uh, Mora is a huge company, so they're very readily available. One of my all-time favorite knives, guys, is the Mora Companion. And one of the reasons I love it so much is because you can get it for about 20 bucks, maybe a little less. And uh, you can find it at so many different sporting goods stores. So it's great. Uh, as a, a knife that you could get a sheath for, you could splurge, you could really justify splurging on a sheath because even if you do break your knife or lose it or whatever, as long as you still have that sheath, you know you could replace it and every companion is going to fit into that thing. So I don't know, I kind of look at things like that sometimes, not trying to sell you on one or anything, but um, it's a lot of fun to have a situation like that where you can really beat on a knife and know that it's so easily replaceable. And that's a, uh, that's a real selling point for me, but let me know what you guys think of the Garberg and other Mora knives down in the comments below. Let's get into these sheets. So obviously these are kind of set up as a mirror image of one another. They're not a hundred percent perfect mirror image or perfectly identical, but as I was building one sheath, I started just taking each component and using each component as a template to build a mirror image component for the opposite one. And then I just kind of, you know, the trim work was by hand as far as shaping the, the sheath and all that. So we got them almost, almost perfectly identical. And I'm really happy with how these came out. So obviously we're looking at a tech lock. The colors are black basket weave with uh, hex cam. Oh, I almost forget this. Hex cam five echo 3D, I think it's called something like that. One of the hex cam 3D echo something or other. It's cool cool pattern. Sorry, I got bit by something on my finger. It's like right on the knuckle. Ugh, driving me crazy. So you'll probably see me inadvertently scratching my hand, <laughs> mindlessly scratching my finger. But anyway, um, yeah, so we got three Exotac products on here as well. We're looking at the Exotac Fire Rod XL, one of my favorite ferro rods. I love the half inch rod. It's uh, also, I want to say it's about four inch length rod. And I believe you can Yep, you can screw that out. So once you've whittled this rod down and it's no longer useful to you, you can actually just buy the refill. So you keep this whole assembly up here, this uh, aluminum CNC milled. It's got a waterproof compartment in it for Tinder or fishing kit or whatever. And uh, you can just buy the rod refills. So it's a lot cheaper to replace it after you invest the first time around. I think these are around 50 bucks, but anyway, I think they're worth it. So for whatever it's worth, I really like Exotac. Um, here we've got the Titan light, Titan lighter, something like that. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I've actually never used it, so I'm not going to speak on it. And then of course we've got the match match cap or match cap XL, I think, but it's a pretty cool product. You can store matches in it, waterproof, and it's got a striking surface here as well as one on the inside of the cap. As you pull it out, it's kind of got a big bevel on it and a surface you can strike a match on. So these are really cool. I really like Exotax Innovation and uh, these are just great to uh, have out in the brush with you and uh, add to a survival kit or to a sheath or whatever. So obviously it does add quite a bit of thickness to your build uh, if you want to put them on like the face of a sheath like this, but you got to ask yourself what you want to be able to transport in what size package and obviously you're gonna to have to make compromises somewhere in that process. So this is what my client has asked for. And um, let's just take a quick look really quick. Quick look really quick. So we got nice retention, you got that click in, no rattle, no play, it's not gonna fall out on you. And you can pop that free pretty easily. Now these are carrying on a tech lock. The idea is that they'll carry at a pretty steep angle. Uh, I set the angle up based on a photo that he had sent me of another sheath that he has. Um, so that's what this matches up with. And uh, 
with a tech lock, it's even easier because this is going to be kind of rigid mounted to the belt. So you have a little bit of resistance. The sheath is going to kind of stay braced and you can pull that out really nice and smooth. If you don't want to use the pressure, the counter pressure from the tech lock on the belt, you can just push off on this. And I'll tell you, it is it is slightly uncomfortable as you push that off to overcome the retention, but it's not so bad that you're going to like injure your thumb or something. It's just a little, a little bit of like a pressure, you know, pressure pinch, whatever you want to call it. So what I like to do is I like to get my knuckle, the underside of that knuckle way up onto that. And I like to choke up as far as I can with my index finger and uh, leave the index finger loose, but grip hard with the other three. And as you do that, it breaks really easy. You can break that retention no problem. At the same time, like I said, it's really in there nice and solid. You don't have to worry about that coming free on you. Same thing with this one. Just kind of choke up on it and it pops right free. So I'm very happy with how these came out. Now, as far as the holders, and you can see I've got some excess elastic bungee or shock cord over here. All of the holders have these notches milled into the uh, the edges of them just inside the uh, the tube shape. And the whole purpose of those notches, as you can see here, is to ensure that the paracord, sorry, I kept saying paracord, to ensure that your shock cord has a nice resting place. So as you stretch it over, you can kind of notch your cord into there and it's not going to allow it to accidentally slip over off the tube. It's really in there. And the whole point of that obviously is to make sure that no matter what your item is going to stay retained. Now with the ferro rod, it's absolutely necessary to have shock cord because you're going to whittle this rod down and it's no longer going to get any kind of friction from the tube. Currently that's in there, but after one or two uses, you're going to just have this, like as soon as you tilt this, it's going to fall right out on you. Um, so you're going to absolutely need the shock cord with the other two it's not strictly necessary but it's definitely a smart idea so i've set these up to um, you know be loose enough that you can just kind of move them pretty easily manipulate them with your fingers but the uh the shock cord is really going to make sure that those stay positively retained at all times so you don't have any accidents so there you go as far as the layout goes i kind of chose the order to put these in for two reasons. Number one, because as you look at like the height of these things coming off the spine of the sheath, it puts them relatively even when you have this one where, the, where it seemed like a natural stopping point to just have this area of the, uh, of the Titan light sheathed and it naturally stoppers itself right there as that bevel is introduced. And uh, with the match cap, the only way I could really think to do this was originally I was going to just have this section sheathed, but then I saw, you know, got this, the whole, the whole shock cord assembly thing and having the notch and having it positively retained would not work if this was the only section getting sheathed or you'd have to like awkwardly feed the cord through and then pull it over and then it would work. But I don't like that at all. So I just made the whole holder match the outer diameter, the widest diameter of your match cap. So it can feed in from either direction. It can feed all the way through. And what will prevent it from feeding through is your elastic bungee stretching over and going into that notch. So there you go. These came out really nice. I'm very, very pleased with them. And everything does fit on the opposite side as well. So all right, guys. Well, that's pretty much all I've got. This is kind of a simple build uh, in, in principle. There's not a whole lot to show you, but at the same time, it was really tough to assemble these. So kind of conceptually, it all works very easily, but putting it together was quite the pain in the butt. <laughs> so I really like these kinds of builds. I really enjoy this challenge, having your brain kind of light up at all times by having to figure things out, solving puzzles. Um, is just kind of something that's, it's almost addicting to me. So I really enjoy it, but let me know what you guys think. How did these come out? Do you like the setups? Is this something that you would personally ever carry? Is it too bulky? Is it does not have enough gear on it? What else would you put on it? What would you swap out? You know, a lot of guys would want maybe a tin instead of a match cap XL or something like that, but all right, I'll leave that for the discussion in the comments down below. Thanks for tuning in guys. I hope you enjoyed this. 
and stick around for the next video. God bless.